you are like me and over the Christmas period you've overindulged on the epic pike and shot and are now wondering how do I get all these sprues onto the table let me show you a quick and easy way to get boots on the table as quickly as possible so yeah um, I'm sitting on the on the floor of the boot room uh, with surrounded by boxes and boxes of epic pike and shot and I've already painted up boxes and boxes of epic pike and shot and I thought I'd show you if you're struggling um, how you might go about painting these things up to a reasonable standard so they're no longer just the plastic but actually look reasonably good from three foot away and on the table because after all a painted figure is always better than a non-painted figure in my book. Now purists you might want to switch off because this isn't for the good painters, right? This isn't for the people who are uh, exceptional painters. And I have seen some amazing paint jobs on these things. Absolutely amazing. Uh, just check them out on, the, on YouTube uh, and in blogs and on Facebook pages. You'll see loads of people doing these brilliantly. This isn't for them. This is for people like me who just want to get boots on the table as quickly as possible so you can play the game and enjoy it. And yeah, I hope that you find this useful. Let's get on. And one of the things I get asked most often is how the heck do I paint uh, so quickly and get so many figures on the table so quickly? Um, and beyond my flippant response of uh, I don't have a life um, and I paint far too much, um, the simple fact is that, uh, apart from that, I do paint an awful lot, is that I do have some nice shortcuts um, and I cheat as much as possible. To, my um, golden rule of painting is do they look good at three foot and is the mass appeal going to work and nothing is uh, more truthful than it is with uh, epic pike and shot in that it is the mass appeal of these sort of troops lined up so painting out one of these sprues of uh, pike and shot is not that difficult if you know how to do it so i thought i'd do a little video for those like me who aren't the best painters in the world but just want to get the troops on the table to look satisfactory so that you feel comfortable playing with them and you've got that mass appeal and eye candy look of you know large numbers of epic pike and shot figures deployed on the table which is what I go after. So we're going to start with the sprue and I'm going to work you through the steps that I take. So the most important step uh, when you're trying to do these uh, pike and shot figures quickly for me is the prime of them so the undercoat for them so there's a lot of good options here uh, one I've taken to at the moment a lot is the Halfords camo spray paint uh, this is khaki ultra matte uh, which gives a really sort of pale sandy color which I like and is quite effective but there's lots of other options you could use AK Colour, Dunkel Geld, um, here's an army painter, sort of sandy colour. Um, anything that's sort of a, a yellowy sandy colour um, should do it. And indeed, if you're doing a particular regiment, like you're going for one of the Swedish, um, uh, it's like a coloured regiment, if you do the red regiment or the green regiment, etc., just use the relevant undercoat, um, use the spray colour. You can buy... You can pick up spray cans of any uh, any of these colours and indeed if you don't like spray cans use uh, just normal paint and just undercoat them. So that's the first step. Um, we're going to undercoat. I'm going to try and use, there's not much left in here, but I will try and use my Halfords uh, car key spray. So you can see the, uh, the undercoat has been applied. Um, I've kept everything on a sprue just because I find it, I find it just a lot easier to handle. First time I did this, it, I didn't like do it, but now I do it all the time, um, just because you've got something to hold on to while you're painting, um, and I can just work around the whole uh, battalion. So uh, what I've done is I've used uh, it doesn't really matter what colour you use, but I've used tanned flesh from Army Painter. Just picked out the faces and the ha uh, faces and the hands on the musketeers uh, the pikemen have got gloves on so you just ne just need to do the uh, faces on them just work my way around 
dob of paint on each of those. You can also see I've put a bit of blue in a couple of places. Uh, the odd pair of trousers just to make it a little bit different. A couple of hats. Um, and then a couple of them I've done uh, caps with black uh, or a dark brown. So I've just, just break it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, just enough to make uh, the colour slightly different. Um, <clears throat> also next up I'm going to do the um, hair. Um, so for that I've just got uh, contrast paint, uh, winchwood, um, and this is what I mean, it's just really dead simple and quick. So you can see the, the guys here, um, I'm just going to slop over the back. You don't have to be massively accurate, just cover. Oops. There you go, that's done. And I've done all the other hairs as well, so that is that phase done. Um, so next up, I'm going to do uh, the armour. Now, the pikemen, all, uh, most of them, have armoured um, breastplate, breastplates. A couple of them have um, sort of thigh pads, armoured thigh pads. Um, but even on the, you have to look carefully, but I mean, it won't really matter at the scale we're, we're doing these, but it just helps again to break up the variety. But you can see this guy's got um, a cuirass on. This guy's got no armor at all. This guy's got a cuirass, he's got a cuirass, he's got no armor. Cuirass, 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 no armor. So you can see there's a variety within them. None of the pikemen, none of the musketeers have um, any kind of armor. And one of the sprues, this complete sprue here, um, has no armor at all. Um, or you can see I've just done a couple of these with slightly different um, yellowy color. So this is a sand color that I just happened to be using for something else. So I just blobbed it on. Um, you can do that. Just put the odd little one here and there. So yeah, I'm going to do armor. For that, I'm using, uh, this is Army Painter, uh, plate metal. Um, so we'll just put some of that down. Oops, splodge. So here we go. So I'll do this. Uh, do this guy at the top here. Oops, get a bit close to you. And you don't have to be massively accurate again, but just. Work your way round, pick out his cuirass there on the front, and also while you're there, just do the the grip or the the guard, sorry, of the ha of the um, sword that they've got. They've all got those. That's one. That's two. Just pick out those. Now this guy. You can see it's almost got a belt affair on here. So you don't need to go too far down. Put the one paint there. And we'll do the third one here on the top. This guy's got um, a kind of like a, uh, a cloth bag there. So you don't need to do all of that. You can just do up to the edge there. Again, do the... The hilt of the sword and then the other thing you mustn't forget to do while you're doing the pikemen is do the tips of the pikes don't have to be massively uh, accurate with that at the moment because we are going to do the shafts of the pikes a different color so i'll do the rest of these and we'll be back right so all the armor's done um also just while you're doing the silver or the plate mail um, there's a halberd guy on the end of one of the musketeer uh, strips and there's also one guy, I lied about the armour, one musketeer who's wearing a helmet. Um, next up we're going to do the socks. Now they're fairly clear, you can see on the figure themselves, on the pikeman here, you can see it very clearly. There's the trouser there, there's a sort of a, a, a roll which is where the gaiter is, just below that is the sock. So we're just going to get some regular white paint 
and just this is just a normal white matte paint don't worry about getting it on the gaiter try not to get it on the trousers if you can help that and just work your way down all the figures bar some of the uh, officery types who wear full boots everybody else has got some kind of gaiter on um, it doesn't or oh, some kind of sock on so it um, you don't need to be massively accurate which is lucky because I'm making a right hock of this but there you go um, remember you are not going to see these figures very clearly they're going to be seen from three foot away and also a large percentage of them are going to be ranked up against somebody else and you won't even see <laughs> so sometimes even the little bits of uh, painting I do it's probably more than you need um, for instance this guy this these guys with no armor probably going to be the back rank so you probably ought to spend more time on the back and not worry about the front but hey anyway I'll do all the whites um, I'll also do uh, where is he now the drummer there we go while we're while we're here We'll do the drummer, his drum, like that, just to give that a bit of a coat. I'm not going to bother doing the sides, I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. And that is a lot for that. So. So all this is about game figures on the table quickly as possible. Be back after done the socks. Right, so the white's all done. Um, I also did a um, a couple of the guys have got um, little tufts of feathers uh, on their cat on the hats. So I've just put white on those. Um, otherwise, we're pretty much done there. Now, my other thing with this period is. Um, not many unif not many uniforms existed. Um, the Swedes had a sort of cursory uh, system of um, uh, uh, coloured regiments where a predominant um, colour was the dominant um, look of the regiment. Um, and there were in the English Civil War there were a couple of regiments that had colours. And certainly when they were firstly raised, a number of regiments would have a uniformity to them because the colonel of the day um, would issue them with their the cloth to make their uniforms with um, but I'm sort of trying to get the sort of feel of a whole load of um, uh, mercenary type ca uh, mercenary type um, soldiers that predominated in the 30 year war which is why I've gone for this fairly um, standard um, color which which actually would work for either side doesn't you know you could you could turn these into troops for either side um, but what I'm going to do to sort of help identification a little bit more is I'm going to on the, the little sort of gaiters they've got ribbons around their uh, lower leg just above the sock um, is going to be um, color specific so Again, I'm just trying to keep it simple to help me. Um, so uh, the Swedes predominantly had blue as their sashes and their and their ribbons, um, and the um, Imperial forces, the Catholic forces, predominantly had red. So that's what I'm going with. Um, so I'm going to do the um, I'm going to do the socky areas here. Yeah, it's just a little line across there. Oh, that's a boot. Like that. And I'm trying to use a fairly bright red so that when we wash it all, it does show up. Again, you don't need to be hugely accurate. A lot of this is not going to be seen, if I'm honest. There's also, um, on the officers, there's a guy here, uh, one here who's got um, a sash around his stomach, so we'll do him. Um, and this guy has one coming down, diagonally down his shoulder. So we'll do that, oops, bit slap hash there, but as I say, it doesn't really matter. 
nobody will see how accurate it or not you are unless you sort of did it across his face or something which would show up so I'm going to do all those um, I'm also going to do um, I'm also going to get the brown paint out uh, just a brown leather um, and do the the gloves on all the pikemen um, so I'll come back when that's all done right so the brown on the uh, gauntlets shouldn't say gloves the gauntlets is done um, just keeping it really simple um, I've done um, the drumsticks and the drummer's hands with um, the same thing because again th this is going to be the second rank so you'll barely see it's just an impression you're looking for that, oh, that's why I keep trying to stress on this hopefully it's coming through it's it's the overall impression you're looking for it's not necessarily individual colors um, so while well, we've got the brown out I'm going to do some of the belts now um, you can see the pikemen have belts coming down their chests they've also got belts around the middle um, so I'm going to do that um, the musketeers it's less obvious um, they got the bandoliers there is another belt there but you will never see it when it comes out you will never see it so I'm not going to bother with it on the front on the backs you can see the the on the pikeman again the belt comes round and attaches to the sword um, so I'm going to do all that in the same brown. Um, I know, lazy, but that's the, that's the order of the what we're trying to do here. On the musketeers on their back, it's a little bit more obvious. You can see the the belt goes down like that underneath the bandolier, and again you've got the um, the sword hilt or sword scabbard, um, and I'm going to do the same with that. So um, back in a bit. Right, so all the brown's done, you can see, uh, well, you may be able to see, um, on all the figures, they're pretty advanced now. Um, and I, keep, I can't stress this enough, you, you cannot afford to get into the detail of these figures, unless you are an outstanding painter with an eye for detail. Even then, I would argue, if you are playing these the way they are intended to be played, which is large battles of massed ranks. It's just pointless. Half these, well, in fact, more than half these figures, you're not going to see any real detail on because they're going to be ranked up. And anyway, you're going to be three foot away from them at a minimum. So unless anybody happens to pick them up with a fine a magnifying glass and look at them in real detail, most of it's not going to be seen. So next up, I'm going to do the shoes. Um, I'm just going to use a straight black um, you can see all the they all have shoes or some description on, and I'm just gonna. Oops, that was a bit slapdash, but you won't see it. I've told this before. In fact, Stee, my mate Stee, claims he didn't paint any of the boots on his uh, Pike and Shop figures because they were covered in clump, and I can kind of see why you wouldn't bother. Anyway, I'm going to do the uh, the black shoes there are a couple of guys here there's this guy here with the uh halberd he's got long boots on so he's different and a couple of the officery types uh here on these ones have got boots on the rest of them just got shoes on so it's a quick uh wipe over with the black and be back <clears throat> right all the shoes and boots are done um, nice and quick. Again, you don't need to be 100% accurate. It's the effect. How many times can I say this? It's the effect. Um, I'm going to do the... Um, all the musketeers have uh, pouches for... Uh, charges for other shot across their chests. And on most, on many of them, it's on the back as well. Uh, there's a number of them have got bags, sacks of some sort on. But uh, I'm only worrying about the... Um, the charges at the moment. So I'm going to use, uh, this is Army, uh, no, it's Vallejo, um, Cavalry Brown. Um, doesn't matter particularly. Browns, I've used um, a sort of uh, a sort of sandy yellow. I've gone for a darker colour for these figures because just to make them stand out, because the base colour is obviously quite sandy as it is. Um, so I'm just, again, not going to focus too heavily on this. We are just going to 
pick out the tips and the highlights and the bit the raised bits basically where the charges hang down so we'll do that some of them are more obvious than others these two in the middle you can barely see and in truth as i've said before these things are all ranked up anyway so you're not really going to see an awful lot of them anyway and i'm going to let the wash at the end bring out the rest of it so it's an impression we're looking for i said that before probably back in a minute so next up uh we're going to use a bit oh this is vallejo uh, khaki um it's a m slightly darker version of the uh the spray that we used uh, and i'm going to pick out the um the sacks that a number of the figures have on their backs again doesn't matter particularly what color i tend to use a sort of yellow based yellowy color so a sandy kind of color um, just something that is a bit different from the rest and just pick out the bags on the backs it's mostly the musketeers that have the bags um, I guess there's some kind of I don't know forage bag or something like that um, there are a couple of the pipemen have them too but mostly as I say it's the uh, it's the musketeers so that's that done. Um, I just noticed a guy here, I've forgotten to do his helmet. It doesn't matter, we've got a stage to do where we can rectify that. So we're getting towards the tail end here. We need to do the muskets of the uh, musketeers and the pikes themselves as well. Um, so for this, I'm going to use, uh, this is a Warlord uh, Wood Brown, but any kind of brown will do. Um, and I'm just going to do the, um, let me just show you. So I'm just going to, um, do the muskets themselves like this, picking out the stocks that are down the side here. And also the stands, each of the musketeers have a stand that uh, they hold the musket on when they're firing. And so we'll do those as well. Now what I have found is you're better off for speed, just go down one side like this. Do everything down the side. Like that. And then once you've done it, spin it around and do the other side and just that way you can just run it all the way up and you don't miss anything okay i'll be back when these are done so next up we're going to do the um barrels and the um the tops of the musket stands just again using um this is the plate mail again um just touching the top again just making sure you just cover the area like that and then just run down the musket like that and do the the what would be the um, firing mechanism there. Now, you, you know, it shouldn't really be silver, but again, at this scale, you couldn't tell. Right, just do that and I'll be back. So also while you're doing the muskets, uh, make sure you just do the, uh, the barrel of the pistol that this officer is holding here. Now, again, you're probably not gonna see it because he'll be in the second rank anyway, but they might not hit, might not roll the hits if you if you don't do their equipment properly. Anyway, um, also it's a good opportunity just to double check you've done all the, um, the helmets and got all the bits of silver and also the bits of the um, hilts and the guards of the of the swords on the particularly on the guys who are standing with their uh, pikes um, 
um, can't think what you call it when they're sort of a, a, a slanted pikes like that. It's not slanted pikes, so you know what I mean. Um, do the little bits of silver on the on the uh, the hilts of the um, swords. Um, so now final stage for the painting, at least. Um, told you this is quick. Is getting out the liquid talent. So this is um, of Citadel's Agrax Earthshade. Um, I like using the browner version on these sort of khaki coloured miniatures. Um, I do also use um, uh, Nuln Oil on some as well, but particularly for this I like that. I think you could also use various other types of um, washes and shades, doesn't matter. Um, just something that brings it all together um, and again at this scale I think this is hugely important now you could water this down um, I'm not going to uh, other than just wet my brush before I get it out the pot and all I'm going to do is just slap it all over the figure and you will find suddenly by a miracle because it's liquid talent your figure starts looking almost approachable as something worthwhile and good and as I say at this scale that's all you're looking for slap it all over very satisfying very satisfying indeed There we go. I'll be back when that's done. Right, that's all done. Um, and I think already you can see that the improvement um, is considerable. Um, these now look passably good for table usage. Um, and it hasn't taken us long at all, a couple of evenings to do all that. Um, most difficult bit is the drying time. Um, so by doing the uh, everything so far on the sprue has made handling it a lot easier and allows me to do the entire battalia at once rather than waiting. So I'll just leave this to dry. We'll be back. Right, it's all dried. Um, <laughs> you know, for the amount of effort, they come out pretty well. There you can see them. I think they work fine. Um, yeah, they're not going to win any um, painting competitions, um, but... These are, keep stressing it, these are massed battle, uh, massed ranked figures. They're designed to be used in large numbers on the table and they are small and you don't need to spend an awful lot of time. Now if I was doing my 28 mils or even sort of open or formation 15 mils, I might well go in and do a little bit of extra highlighting at this stage. I'm not going to bother. All I'm going to do is clip these suckers off the sprues like that and even where the joins are I may just tidy them up a little bit but you don't really notice that either so just knock that little bit of gidget there and once they're ranked up whoops once they're ranked up I might just put a little blob of uh, Agrax on on that bit the join and um, we're ready to start basing. So let me chop them all off Just tidy up the nozzles at the bottom because That will prevent a snug fit I'll get them all off and we'll do the basing Right, they're all off the sprues um, and um, Yep, the the nozzles at the bottom just tied it up just enough to make sure they clip onto the, the sprue like that, onto the basing. So just take a little bit of time, make sure you get them so they actually sit snug. Uh, and also on these individual figures, make sure you run a blade along there, being careful with your fingers obviously, on the underside because uh, when you take them off the sprue there's invariably a little... Um, residue there and if you don't they don't stand upright and fitting these things is a bit of a bugger in its own right so um, the way I choose to do these 
is um, basically the way I think I've seen most people do them, if I'm honest, is we have the guys with the pike like that in the front rank, the officer group with the standards in the second rank, the third rank is the armoured pike uprighties, Oops. And the, th and the final rank is the unarmoured. That's how I do it. So, um, mentioned before, <sighs> these things are <laughs> fiddly little so and so's. Now, one tip I will impart on you take it for what you want. Rather than going in with your trusty super glue, which is what I would normally do, I've just got some all purpose clear Bostic glue in this case. It could be Yoohoo glue, anything like that. A PVA, I'm not sure, will work because it's too long setting so a, a glue that is relatively long setting but not hugely and apply that on the base now the reason why I do that rather than uh, super glue is it gives me time to move these individual pike figures around because they are fiddly so we'll start with the back rank in place like that now, as I say, you've, because 10 is quite a lot of figures to get in this front rank. So I'm going to start on the ends, like that, the two end guys. Get them as snug to the end as you can. Sorry, I don't know whether you can see that. As snug to the end as you can, can and then just work down. Now, if you were using super glue, it would already be going off and you wouldn't have any ability to move the figures again very easily afterwards. So, use a pair of tweezers if you like. Just make sure they're as snug as you can get them. So I find this really fiddly. But then I have got fat fingers. Oops, there you go. Conclusive proof. That's six in there. Got just about enough room for four more. And you can use less. I, buy, I bought some on the internet and the guide used only seven in the front rank. And you know what? It doesn't look that bad. But if I put all the effort into painting them, I might as well use them, right? Because the glue hasn't gone off, I can move them around a little bit. If that was super glue, they would all, the first ones would all be stuck already. Now, if there's a little bit of variation in, you know, their spacing and how they're set up, and the, I think that adds to the colour of the thing. There you go, you can see the pikes are all over the different levels, but then they would be. And that's them done. Yeah, trial and trial. I've, trust me, I've done a lot of these things, and um, using something like Bostic is so much quicker in the long run. Uh, the ability to move these around, and it does stick. This is plastic on plastic, it, it sticks pretty well. But you'd be very unlucky if it popped off. So we'll do the uh, the regular dudes, upright pikeys. Oops, oh, flip. That's the only problem with Yoohoo and Bostic is all the stringy bits you get. That's the armoured dudes. Now, more of a problem with the musketeers is make sure you get them the right way around. I have been known to stick them on. And then turn around and think, oh, sugar, put them the wrong way around. One facing forward, one facing back. Um, so just double check that. So that's those two done. Oop, see the stringy glue. Um, and then the musketeers. Now, you, you obviously got two different uh, ranks of musketeers. You've got the guys with the muskets grounded and the guys with the muskets shouldered. I choose to put the shouldered guys in the back rank and the ground ones in the front row. In my imagination, they're marching forward. The guys at the back are just still coming into formation. 
and the ones at the front have just got there and they're about to present their muskets. So for me that makes sense. So I am going to do it that way. Um, you also, oops, keep it on the base on would be good, rather than glue it to the newspaper. Obviously the, uh, the, the bits, the, 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 the plugs, whatever you call them, the, all right, I'm just going to call them the knobs. Obviously the knobs, um, help in terms of keeping these in place while the glue goes off. But there you go. If you've trimmed around the, uh, the nub, um, you'll find that they stick on pretty well. Oh, these guys, on one of the th sets, they've got the guy with the halberd. And again, I, I kind of like the idea that he's in the front rank. So, which is why, again, I like the grounded muskets in my front rank. I don't know which way around other people do it. I don't care, that's how I do it. Uh, and there you go. That's them all based up. They look absolutely fine. I think you'll agree. I hope you'll agree. I'm sure. So I'm sure by now some people have rage quitted um, because I haven't done whatever I haven't done. Um, but as I say, these are for getting these on the table, and they look fine to me. Right. So uh, I'm going to do some basing on them. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm probably doing it quicker than I would otherwise do. So um, hopefully this will come okay. I'm going to get out a an older brush. Bear with. Right, so normally I'd allow this a bit more time to, to glue, for the glue to go off, but um, it is only you know, who and not super glue. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad. I've got um, some uh, Mod Podge, um, or Mod Podge. Uh, basically, a PVA glue is absolutely fine for this. I've also got uh, my trusty basing material from um, uh, what is it from gaming geeks um, this is was well, a mixture of all different so I can't possibly tell you what style it is I think there's some of the new small scale grit that they, they sold in amongst some of the older longer star stuff doesn't matter I just top it all up um, again at this start at this scale it doesn't really um, matter terribly uh, older paintbrush dollop of glue on said brush and start in the middle so run the brush down the back of the first guys and the front of the second guys liberally applying the glue if you get it on their boots it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter go around the edgings Still, still not quite stuck there. So, uh, and then at the front ranks, just dab in amongst the feet. Like that. Plenty of glue. These sort of PVAs um, dry, clear, so it doesn't matter if you get too much on there. But I do like to just wipe the edge just to make sure that there isn't uh, too much glue left on the side there. Come down the other side. I have experimented by, at um, just doing one rank, gluing the basic material on, then doing the next rank. But I can't say the effect was any appreciably different and getting the bases to the the second rank to go on perfectly when you've got little bits of basing grit stopping the contacts for me we just made it even more effort and i didn't like it so there you go that's that and we just pop it in there can't find my little spoon thing that little teaspoon that i use doesn't matter just use this blunt knife Poke it all over, down the middle.
Oops. Give it a good shake. Done. Done, done, done. Now, once this is dried, I will do the edging with a, probably with a matte black of the base, just because I particularly, I just like to have that uniformity. And I will varnish these and find a suitable flag. And I'll show you what it looks like up close and personal. Back in a bit. Right, so they are uh, varnished. Um, if anyone's interested, uh, this is what I use for varnish. This is Windsor and Newton Professional Matte Varnish. It's a little bit more pricey than a standard varnish, but I think it gives a really fantastic finish uh, that sort of brings everything together at the end. Um, I also varnish once my basing material is on because I think it helps the um, the, the bits and bobs to, to adhere so as it dries it sticks better with the varnish on it so these aren't quite dry but for the interest of the video uh, you can see I've done the um, if you can see I've just blacked the edges of the bases just to finish that off um, and I'm now going to apply some standard so I'm just using the what's left of a sheet that I got in one of the boxes um, you can see well used I'm not entirely sure which way round the flags go, but I'm just going to use them in the way round that they have them on in, on the uh, on the sheet. Um, so you've got two guys who are the standard bearers: this one here and this one here. So they have the shorter, heavy-headed spears rather than um, rather than pike. Um, now this is the way I found to to, to do them. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other ways, but this is my preferred way. So I cut them out as neatly as I possibly can, fold them, forgive my fat fingers, fold them in half, like so. Make sure it's as squeezed as possible. Then, where's my glue gone? Oh, get some Yoohoo or similar glue. old paintbrush. Now what I do is I put a little bit of uh, glue on the po on the on the uh, oops sorry on the standard bearers pole who were uh, misses I get some glue on in one side of the thing. I don't go right up to the corner, uh, right up to the, 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 the join or the fold in the middle. Then just fold the two together so they line them up. But again, don't squash it right to the end. So there's a, you can, I hope you can see that. Whoops. There's a sort of little gap there, which I can then use just to slide over there. Now I squeeze right up against the pole there. Some people might say shaft. I wouldn't be so crude. And at this stage, don't don't try and fold it. Just leave it there. There's a bit of excess glue coming out. Don't worry about it. It'll clear. It will dry off. Then do the other flag exactly the same way. A little bit on the standard on the pole itself. And then just, oops, let's me, there we go, there we go. And just fold again, just leaving the middle unfolded. Slide it over. Oops, come on, there we go. Now, then just squeeze it back in. What I try and do at this stage is make sure that there's no real gap, well, not a very obvious gap at the top. So these ones are slightly easier because they've got the, the heads of the spears are quite big. So they kind of cover up a bit of the looseness, if you like. So there you go, they're on. You could leave it like that. I put, like to put a little bit of a wave in mine 
So I'll just, while it's still wet, but not complete, not, you know, basically while it's still a bit moist, shall we say, just put a little kink in the flag like that. That one hasn't quite dried enough to do it, but never mind, I'm doing it quickly here. There we go. There we go. I think that works pretty well. Um, another little tip on the underneath of each of these flags is the unit name. I've just put my <laughs> put my paintbrush away. Um, on, so what I do is I cut off the unit name. So this is uh, Willenstein's Regiment. Uh, Savily, Savily. I'll just stick that on the underside. Just helps me remember who they're supposed to be. Simples. Now I can't say I've done that with every unit because I forget. But if you remember, it's just kind of nice. And also because, oops. Oh come on, stick down. It's because I put my paintbrush and water um, yeah there you go and because it's slightly um, indented there's a sort of ridge around the outside that doesn't actually touch the ground so there you go they are done so what's that taking me I mean it's taken longer because I've had to allow drying time and uh, working around the video and what have you but two, two good evenings you can do a, a battalia um, which I think is pretty good indeed. So I'll let these dry thoroughly, I'll do some pictures, um, and then just talk about some of the tips that I would instill on this process. Back in a minute. So there you go, there's the regiment finished, uh, joining the ranks of all my epic uh, Pike and Shot 30 Year War collection. Um, it's taken me a couple of evenings to do these, um, that's typically how long it takes me nowadays. Um, it's difficult to know exactly because I have a production line of them done, sprues undercoated and prepped and ready to go and so forth. Um, and I also find that I try and intersperse other things um, to keep me fresh because painting the same figure effectively over and over again can be a little bit um, uh, tedious. Anyway, um, I think they're effective. Um, they look good on mass, which is what I'm looking for. So let's get to the golden rules uh, as far as I'm concerned with uh, painting these pike and shots. And, and please feel free to uh, contribute in if you're still watching and you've painted up loads of these yourself. Um, contribute in the comments down below. Um, sort of advice for those who are just getting out on this journey. Um, for me, number one, as I showed already, is the uh, the primer, the undercoat that you put on. That is the key thing. Um, and if, indeed, I, I find that with all painting figures. Um, I try and use an undercoat that is, uh, reflects the, um, the sort of painting that I'm going to be doing. So if I'm painting Napoleonic British, I'll use a red undercoat. Although that's not the best one. It's <laughs> not easy to, to paint on. But you, you get my point. So I think if you start with a, a relevant undercoat, um, that helps a lot. And as you've seen in this journey, um, that's doing most of the work in these figures, is that undercoat. So apply it properly, make sure you get a good coverage, um, make sure you spray, if you're using the spray, do it outside, um, hold a good distance away, make sure your spray can is properly warmed up. Uh, don't put it on a heater, but uh, make sure it's warmed up and you've shake, shaken it a good amount to get lots of, uh, to get the ball bearing bouncing around and uh, agitating the, the paint successfully and then just give it a good coat and make sure the figures are properly coated in it. Um, next up, um, remember, remember, remember that it is the three foot rule. These figures are massed, ranked, massed battle figures. Yes, you can spend a lot of time painting them up but really, is it going to make that much difference when you've got 20, 30 or more battalia of these things on the table? 
is anybody really going to notice that you spent a lot longer time on one particular battalia over another? Um, now maybe they do if they end up picking them up and looking at them up close, but uh, I would suggest most people, my experience with these so far when I've taken them to club is people just go, wow, look at the effect. It looks like a battle scene and that's what you're trying to achieve with them. So don't worry about, you know, these are going to look crap. These are going to, it's, it's the effect and your figures on the table are always going to be better than somebody who just attaches the, the raw plastic to the bases and plays with them. Not that I'm, you know, getting at them, that's fine. If that makes you happy and it gets you playing the game, then that's all important. Um, next up, pick out some different colours in them. You can see in these, I haven't done many, but just every so often I've done some little, you know, a different colour uh, on the trousers or the jacket or whatever it may be, the hats, just to break up that uh, uniformity a little bit. Randomise it. Blah. Just, you know, knock yourself out. Um, try and use colours that would have been, you know, available in the time. Um, but really, just one or two little splodges here and there are important. The other thing is brightness. When you varnish, when you, oh, sorry, when you wash these figures, um, or any figures for that matter, it does tend to dull down the colours. So don't be afraid if the colours you've used look bright. Um, the, uh, you know, some people might have looked at the the the, the plate metal colour that I use for the helmets and thinking, "Crikey, that looks a bit bright." But you can see once it's had a wash, it dulls it down. And then again, when the varnish goes on, it dulls it down a little bit further. And actually, the upshot is it. Uh, I think the colours are about right. Um, so brightness doesn't is actually your friend. Similarly, although. It's a lot of effort. I, I kind of like doing the little gaiters on the on the trousers. Um, it's not very obvious, but it's just that general um, feeling of colour there, which I think works. Do your flags. Make sure you put the flags in. They bring the units to, together, um, and I think that's fantastic. Um, I think that just adds to the the, the pageantry and the colour, if you, if you like, of the of the game. Um, don't worry about basing. You know, I've seen people put loads of tufts on, and I, you know, I love a tuft myself. <laughs> I am partial to a tuft, but personally, I think they they hide too much of the figure. I bought some off uh, somebody on the internet, and he's selling off some actually quite nicely painted figures. But he'd gone to town with the tufts, um, and I want to rip them all off, and I may yet do that. So I think keeping it simple. Uh, as you saw, just using some ready basing materials, some flock or whatever it is, just putting substantial amounts of glue on there, slop it around, um, and just, you know, the effect is pretty good. I think it works well for me. Um, other tips. Don't be afraid. Just have a go. As I say, practice makes perfect. And, you know, while this approach works for me, other people have other approaches and what I thoroughly recommend everybody to do is look at other people's approaches on painting and just think, yeah, I can take that bit or, you know, I actually prefer doing it X, Y or just take elements from different painters and apply them into your painting because um, you have to feel comfortable dealing with it. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably it. Did I mention... These are mass battle figures and you don't need to worry about individual painting jobs on them. Just it's the effect of them all laid out on the table. I may have mentioned that once or twice. Anyway, I hope this is useful. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, share it. If you didn't, please don't share it. Uh, no, seriously, if you didn't, if you got some you know, views on how you paint your figures, let me know in the comments down below. It's a community we all trying to learn from each other. Um, I know for people who really spend their time um, on painting figures, this may well have got in their craw, but you know they're probably still not probably not watching now. They probably already left their snidey comments and moved on. <laughs> but um, I hope for some of us who just want to get the figures done, this is helpful. I hope if you're looking at the the big box of sprues or just the few sprues you've got kicking around, you think I really want to get them done. It was helpful and you can get your figures on the table. And um, happy gaming, 
Happy New Year to you all. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, people's works on Facebook and on YouTube and everything else. Um, because this is an awesome community and I love gaming community. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.